And those of you who might know Star Wars, uh, you know that the Jedi, you might think we look like Ewan McGregor or um, you know other really uh, famous actors, but in fact, uh, as Jedi, we, we look like very normal people and we dress like normal people and we walk amongst you. Uh, we don't want to call attention to ourselves, but we are capable of these amazing tricks to change your mind. Uh, just by a wave of our hands, we can change your mind and change your thinking. And that's what I'd like to do today. Uh, I should also note that as Jedi, we are told we can never use this tremendous power for personal gain. We can never use it, for instance, to bet on horses or, or blackjack. We can only use Jedi mind tricks to advance the public good and what could be more important in advancing uh, the importance of education in a new way. Someday the neuroscientists were putting out all sorts of great research, in fact a lot of it coming out of this area, Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, will tell us, you know, that, that thing we told you about the brain and the neurons and the synapses, it's actually just a set of chips uh, and on an integrated circuit board. That's your brain. What I'd like to do today is just change one little chip, uh, your thinking about education. Because we all went to school, we think we know what school should be, we think we know what a teacher was, we hope we had some great teachers, we were all students. Uh, we went to a place called school. The schools are very different from the ones we went to. Um, the ideas are very different. We, we uh, prize things such as project-based learning, not just textbook-based learning, but projects that mimic what goes on in the modern workforce. These are projects where people work together, students and teachers are collaborating, Back in the day when we were students, if you shared your work with another student, or you took a, a look at what your fellow students were doing, that was called cheating. And now, collaboration is, is the key trait that workforces are looking for, and that's something we can have our students learn as well through our school. Here in Fort Worth, you're very fortunate. You have museums and libraries and universities, nonprofit groups that are all getting together to support your kids wherever they are. We can look forward to a new day for learning. It's not just six hours a day, five days a week, 180 days a year, but 24-7, 365. I talked a lot about innovation as a key. I've worked at the Lucas Foundation for 15 years now. And in the beginning, I'd tell these stories. And people would say, well, that's nice to know, but that's not us. It's nice that there's a group of kids in Chula Vista, California, who have access to a fiber optic cable connection. They're able to video conference with scientists at San Diego State in real time. They collect insects and they send their insects to the university. And the scientists, the entomologists there, show them their own insects under their scanning electron microscope. These are nine-year-olds. I would show that, that segment 15 years ago. And people say, well, that's great for them, but that's not us. We don't have video conferencing. We don't have access to universities. But now, what was formerly a nice to know is now a must do. Everyone in this country and around the world is trying to figure out how do we innovate in education, innovate learning. What is your definition of a great school? The key to this question is to make it short and also to make it measurable. We want ways of evaluating whether schools are doing a good job. I was asked this question in Washington, D.C. by the head of the Superintendents Association, Paul Houston. He said, no, I see that you've got this great website, this great schools, you've documented their film. What's your definition of a great school? And I said, well, of course, when you're in these schools, you can tell immediately uh, it's in the school culture, the climate, uh, the kids are engaged to be there, the teachers are working together. There's great leadership from the principal, from the school board. And Paul said to me, you know, that's getting a little long. Could you, um, could you make it short? And how would you measure that? How would you know if a school was a great school? And I heaved a sigh and I said, well, we're still doing a lot around measurement. We don't really have the right measurement tools. We're working on that. It'll take us a while. He said, okay, okay. Paul Houston said, here's my definition. Do the students run in at the same rate that they run out? That's it. We can measure this. <laughs> when students are so excited to be at their school, they're racing in together. And we've documented this in some of our programs we've seen. When the end of the school day comes, the kids say to the parents, could you wait a second? I'm working on something here. I'm working with my fellow students. We're working on a project. We're going to make a presentation. So that's the great measure 
of, of a great school is do the students run in at the same rate that they run out? Thank you for this opportunity to share my ideas with you, and congratulations on the great work you're doing here in Fort Worth. I look forward to following it and telling people back in San Francisco what you're doing. Thank you.